Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about riba or interest usury and how do we recognize it? It's one of those everyday mundane things that are hard to spot if you don't have experience with it. So I'm gonna give you simple few tips so that you can recognize riba in daily transactions. So let's begin. Bismillah. So riba or interest in a linguistic sense just means increase. In Sharia sense, it is a type of illegal increase of some sort. Now, as a concept, riba is very complex. There are many types of riba dealing with many different asset classes. But today I will focus on just very simple money for money exchange. And the reason for this is because today most of the riba or transaction that we might engage that might contain riba will be from this type. So if you look at transactions whenever you are buying and selling something, goods or services, there are basically two most common ways of engaging. Either you are buying product or a service, something that is non-monetary, or you are getting money and you are going to repay more money later on. So where is the riba? A riba is found in the second transaction, whenever there is money for money. Now, let me give you a case study that I find very often. Person goes to the car shop to buy a car. They go there. If the financing is zero interest, then that, that is fine, right? Sometimes the companies might have an old stock. They just want to get rid of it. So they will give you zero financing. I get this question a lot. And people say to me, but what if they give me on interest, but it's fixed? In reality, any increase from the principal, whether that increase is as a fixed or benchmark to some variable rate, doesn't really make any difference. It's more than a principal. And that more part is the interest. Because when I'm buying and selling assets, I can buy and sell them at profit. What I cannot do is buy and sell money at profit. And so when we are doing this transaction in the car shop, what aim we are trying to accomplish is that we want to engage in genuine trade. All right, I don't want to take a car loan from you. I don't want to borrow money. What I want to do is you sell me the car. So sometimes people negotiate with the car dealership and they say, so you calculate everything that you want, but put me that as a sale price of the car. So this could take us to two situations. Number one is that they're still doing a loan and they just fix the prices and pay package everything in one price. It would still be interest if the contract is the loan, money for money. But if they change that contract where the subject matter of sale is actually car, then no matter how they form that price, what they use to calculate at their pluses and minuses, they tell you the price and it's actually not a loan but a sale then that would be permissible in the end i will remind you of advice that shuaib gave to the to his people in surah hud when he said to them to be content with halal because the real richness is in being content with what you have and earning that which is halal and not desiring that which is not halal Thank you for spending time to watch this video. If you would like to learn more about finance and economy from Islamic perspective, head to our new platform, Muslim Money Matters, where we go in much greater details regarding the content. Until next time, my name is Almi Cholan. Salam Alaikum.